This is going to be a video about programming this nut like I mentioned in the previous video for this uh, fixture for the sleeve, this mandrel for the sleeve part. Um, I'm going to go through the programming of the part in a spree. And to me this is kind of like, uh, makes a boring video. So, you know, if you're not interested in that, you could skip ahead and there's going to be some machine work at the end. But in, in showing this demonstration in Esprit, I'm going to go through kind of the steps you do to program, but normally you probably set these strategies, save them in files, and you could just um, recall the file and, and just uh, drop it on the, the feature, they call it, in Esprit. And, and it would be much quicker than this, but I, I'm going to go through a lot of the settings and everything. And like I say, to me it's a little bit long and, and, and uh, doesn't make that interesting of a video, but in the end of this, I'm going to show the actual machine work like I programmed. Well, I'm going to run the actual program I make in this video on the, on the Mazak. So, um, although I haven't actually made the, the video yet, so I can't tell you the exact number to go to. Once I make it, I'll, I'll put it in this video right here in this explanation, and so you can go right to that time in the video and skip it if you'd like that. Uh, I'm, the only reason I'm doing this is people have asked for this demonstration. I guess maybe they use this free software or something like it and they want to know. So skip forward if you don't want to see this part of the video. And this is going to be threaded with an inch and 5 eighths 12 thread on the end here to fit this nut that we're going to show in this video here. So that's the whole reasoning behind this and the reason I'm making this nut to begin with. So here's the nut in another file that I've repositioned for the cam software. And my cam software is a spree cam and it's just easier to draw this kind of thing you know in a CAD software and then import it into a spree. So in order to get it into a spree I have to save it as a different file format which is going to be an ASUS or, or .sat file and here's the nut. I've already done this once but I'm just going to copy over it so that's saved ready to import into a spree. So we're going to jump over to a spree here and I'm going to show you how we're going to set this up and program it. Here we are in a spree and I've just opened the file. I've, I've defined some tools so we don't have to go through all of that and um, we're going to import the model first, so I'm going to make sure we're on the appropriate layer for the model to be imported. I'm going to go over here, File, Open, and you have to merge this file with the existing file. You've got to find the appropriate folder, and here's the, the NUT SAT file, so we're going to import that which you see it right there like that right now. Now, it would be beneficial to divine, define the stock, um, the appropriate size, and the stock I'm starting with is 2.525 in diameter, and it's three and a quarter. This isn't too critical, I just want to a basic definition of the stock here and, and we're going to uh, we're just going to move the the chuck back out of the way we don't care about that because I have this I actually have this small chuck in the big chuck and and we're not going to have interference problems so, so let's fire up the simulation just to see what we have here I'm going to turn the chuck off because we don't need to worry about that we're not going to have interference problems with that, so we can just use this as is. Um, now, I'm going to actually mask off the, the chuck spindle and the stock, because we don't need to worry about seeing it while we're programming here. So here's our model, and I might want to have a wireframe of this, so in order, I'm going to put it on a different layer here, and, and um, I'm going to select the model 
And in this software, you have to smash it in. They call it smash. I don't know what that means exactly, but into a wireframe on the model. This can be useful for certain things. So if I turn off the solid, you can see the wireframe there. Um, now, we, I want to get a turning profile of this, so I'm going to change my layer over to geometry, and I'm going to select this little icon here. It gives me a turning profile. Select the model, and I'm going to get a full profile, so I get the ID and the OD. And I'm going to increase the resolution on this a little bit and say OK. Now, if I turn off these other layers, the model and that, we'll see that this is the, this is the basic turning profile or cross-section of the part, which is going to be important for the turning operations. So the first thing that I usually do, I usually have, I set this up with about 30,000 stock on the face, so I want to do a facing cut here. So in so Spree, you've got to define features to do this with. So I'm just going to manu manually define this feature down this line and here, and this is going to be our facing cut. I'm going to rename, rename that face here. And then I'm going to define, I'm just manually defining these on the wireframe. There's different ways to do this, but for turning, this is just about the fastest, easiest way to do a simple thing like this. And I'm going to call that, that one the OD. Okay, and then we're going to define a, I'm going to define a little geometry here, actually, because I know I'm going to want to do something back in here a little different for this chamfer on the back if I want to do that before I do the thread and everything. So I'm going to go over here to create unbounded geometry and I'm going to set a I'm going to set a line about oh, let's say 150 thousandths over this way. And in order to trim trim that line up, I'm going to set another one here let's let's put that at zero I'm gonna actually offset another one about let's say thirty thousandths above that one like that and I'm just gonna draw this line in here in order to trim that off to where I want it and let me think about this I'm gonna drill this with a an inch and uh three-eighths drill so in order to uh, well I don't I don't really need it I'll just put this here let me do this again here I'm gonna draw this line now this is all unbounded geometry this is the way kinda of the way you have to draw things in this cam software it seems like a kind of a pain in the um, I'm gonna delete this line because I no longer need it right here and I'm going to trim this. I'm going to select this thing here, and I'm going to trim this line up to that, this one, like that. This is going to be what I'm going to turn back in here. Is the reason I'm defining this right now for the um, kind of a relief groove for the threading cycle, if you will. I don't really need this anymore, so I'm going to get rid of that. Okay. Because I want to do this. I want to cut this up in here first. What we're going to do is rough this bore back to here, and then come back and rough out this area, and then do a finished turning operation of the bore. So in order to do that, first I'm going to define this... Um, Picked the wrong thing there. I'm going to find that as my bore. I'm going to call it rough bore. If I could spell it right, R O U 
Okay. So that's going to be the rough board. Uh, this here is going to be sort of our thread relief thing. Okay, and then we're going to have a finished turning cycle that's going to be a separate thing. Then I'm going to just go back to here. I'm going to actually shorten this, but this is the finished bore. Bore. Now these are, I'm just defining these features initially right here for the turning operation, but y you could do this as you go. I'm just doing it like this right now. This is going to be our, our thread. That's all I need to make the thread. Okay. So that's, that's all the, the information we need to actually do the turning of the part now if we go over here to the turning cycles let's let's define all this first before any milling on this we'll just make a cut going straight down the face here Oop, I gotta select it first straight down the face I'm gonna call it a face cut we're gonna select the tool here which is a rough OD tool and it's going to be positioned like that and let me see here what we're doing here we're going to be in high range here we're going to limit the RPM to 1000 RPM and we're probably going to turn a lot faster than this let's let's say about 450 surface footage 2.5. I'm just going to set this here so I can get an idea how many RPM that is. And we're going to go at 12,000 speed. Here's our strategy is face. The start extension is probably going to be 200 thousandths because I got this big chamfer on here. I don't need any end extension. And these dimensions here are, are um, in Z is, is just straight Z, but these X's are, are actually radius on, on this software, so um, one and a half inches should be clearance enough. So the stock is two and a half in diameter. So that's good there. This doesn't, that that's fine there. And we're going to leave some stock in um, Z, let's take five thousandths of an inch. We don't care about X, it's just a facing cut. And these are the how it deals with cutter comp, I mean, a tip compensation, I should say, which we are using. Okay, so let's uh, let's do that. So that's our cut here. I'm gonna face. I'm going to rename it Rough Face. It looks like it's coming pretty close to the OD of the stock there. I think I'm going to increase this, this extension to 250. So if we just simulate that, let's slow this down. There's our simulation. Do that again so you can see it better. Okay. So that's a simulation of the face cut. And we're gonna we're gonna rough the OD with the same tool right now as it sits. So let me uh what am I doing here? Let me select a rough turning cycle, OD cycle, and we'll select the same tool, same position. high range stock diameter there and let's go 450 again on the surface footage 12,000 feet that looks pretty good 
Okay, strategy, OD, that's already right. Start extension, 100 thousandths, that's probably all right. End extension, I'm gonna extend this, I'm gonna extend this about 150 beyond because I wanna run a parting tool off here to part this part off. And 1.5, one inch in Z clearance, one, 1.5 in the OD. No cutter comp. I, I don't like to use cutter comp on this roughing cycle, or tip comp, I should say. So I normally don't do that because it can kind of foul up the machine when the, when the tool, tool's going back and forth and stuff. We're going to do simulation, automation on the stock thing here, and um, three thousandths. Ten thousandths. That's probably good for stock amount. And what do we got for depth of cut here? Maximum depth of cut. Let's take a hundred thousandths of an inch. And I think the rest of that'll be all right. Okay. So that's our roughing cycle for the OD. So if we simulate that. We got that, okay. Now I guess we could come in and let's, um, oh, I gotta define another uh, feature here in order to drill this. So I'm gonna change my work plane to face into the part. I think it's that one. I'm gonna turn on my um, part model. And I've gotta define a uh, hole, make a manual selection. I gotta select the size of that too or it won't do it there. Okay, so that's the the ID hole. So if I turn this off you can see that's the hole going through the part so we can drill it now. So let me select that and we're gonna drill this hole next. here and I gotta select a drilling cycle right there I'm gonna drill straight in we're gonna use this inch and oh I haven't defined that tool yet let me let me go back and define the tool I didn't I thought I had to find this tool already new million tools a, a drill And I don't know what tool number. I'm going to give this tool number 9 for right now. 0.01. And it's going to be a 1.375 T-U-N-G-A-L-O-Y insert drill. 9. Offset number 9. We're going to want through the spindle coolant on this tool. 1.375 I'm just giving these descriptions so that it'll put them in the in the um, the program when it outputs code and putting it in the milling spindle and this is the orientation it has to be for this machine in order all tools are actually all milling tools are in this orientation it rotates the b-axis appropriately to put the tool in the right spot. Um, I don't know how big this holder is. It's not really critical. We're just drilling a hole that's only about a little over an inch deep here, so it doesn't really matter. I'm just putting in some basic numbers there. 1.375 is the tool diameter, 180 degrees on the face because it's a kind of square on the end. Um, cutting length is there. Number of flutes, one. An insert drill only has one flute, actually. And so that's good enough for that tool. That'll work. I'm going to set this at 0.01. Okay, so 
we got this hole now we can drill our hole in here and we can select that tool and surface footage let's say we'll go with 450 again and I'm, I'm actually drilling this with the milling spindle not with the lathe spindle in this case and I want a feed of let's start at three thousandths per revolution here Gonna drill straight in um, this will be the depth that it figures down to here but I just I actually want to drill deeper than that I'm gonna drill at least to here and I think I'm gonna drill a little bit deeper than that let's go 1.3 inches deep I want to make sure I get beyond where this relief is going to be with the boring bars okay clearance of one inch in, on the face thirty thousandths it's going to start thirty thousandths of, I might increase this because we already have no we faced it off didn't we so thirty is fine I thought maybe we still had that stock on the face so that's the hole so let me um let me section through this. We can simulate this whole thing again. So there's the hole just to get most of the stock out of the bore there. So I'm going to turn off this um, solid model of the part again. So we can just see what we're doing with the lathe work here. Now we want to come in here and rough out this bore, which is this cycle right here, or this feature. We're going to select this again, a roughing cycle, and this time we're going to select the number three here, and then we're going to have that orientation. We'll keep all that the same. Strategy is going to be an ID start extension, end extension, we don't want to go any further than that than our feature and this 1.5 we drilled it in inch and three eighths right so half of inch and three eighths so we're going for point six fifty because remember these are radiuses and that's the way they made this software I don't know and the roughing cycle itself I'm going to take about 60,000 step to cut with this boring bar per pass and everything else should be alright oh we got to do a I'm going to rename this also ID we have to define the um, for some reason it's not getting this automation correctly so we're going to define a diameter and we're going to call it 1.375 for the drill diameter so let's look at that a simulation okay now I thought I had to find a thought I had to find here a six seven eight oh here number eight a 35 degree diamond tool okay that's what this is and what we want to do is is this relief first I'm gonna rough this relief and then we're actually gonna finish the bore with that 35 degree diamond tool so first we're gonna to have to rough that and we're gonna select this roughing cycle again we're gonna change over to that tool which was this I'm going to leave that surface footage we're going to change this to about 8,000 speed per revolution and this should be well now we've got an inch and a half bore so we could probably go 700 thousandths here one point 480 we'll say here on the bore size I'm going to try this with no extension here to begin with just to see how that looks and we're going to rough it 
smaller depths of cut here because we're, we're, we're walking a, a 30 thousandths. We're walking down this angle, and this is kind of hard on a tool to plunge down like this, so let's see what that looks like. I'm going to call this rough uh, relief just to give it a different name. And so that looks pretty good like that. See, I'm not worried too much about back in here because we're going to part this off actually down to here. And so it really doesn't matter. In fact, I can even I didn't even define the parting tools thing. We can define a feature for that. Just gonna go part off, we'll call it. Gonna need that later on when we go in with the parting tool, which there again I haven't defined that tool. I didn't see it here, so I'm gonna to do that as well. So that's the rough bore. Now we're gonna do a finish boring cut here which is going to be a profile and we're going to call that an ID cut and we're going to select that same tool and we might step up this surface footage and we'll go down to about 4,000 feed what RPM is that going to be? Well it's not even going to make it to that RPM at an inch and a half diameter to a thousand it's going to top out at a thousand RPM which I set the limiter there. We'll leave that alone. That doesn't really matter too much. Probably 50 thousandths. It's going to end about minus 0.1. We'll try this. 0.7 here. 0.7 here. For the starting. This is just a starting point when it rapids to before it starts this cut. Okay, so let's go to the operations and let's run this again. Kind of simulate it. So we're roughing out the relief. Like I say, the only purpose for that is to thread up into that relief so we don't... I mean, we probably could thread it without this relief, but then when we part it off, we're going to have to go back and chamfer that, so might as well do it now while we got it there. And so that's that. Now, now we've got to um, thread the part. I'm going to have to look at some data here a little bit, see where I'm going to. According to the gauge maker data, this is an inch and 5 eighths 12 thread. So we're going to select our threading cycle. And that's our threading tool. Picture doesn't mean anything. It's a, it looks a little different. We want, we want to have it positioned like that. Let's see, what are we going to do here? RPM wise, let's um, 500 RPM. The reference diameter is 1.625. So 500 RPM is going to be 213 surface footage. We could probably go faster, 600 RPM. You just got to be aware of, of, of chatter on a threading tool. And the feed rate is going to be equals 1 divided by a 12, right? 83 thousandths. Okay, that's our feed. We're going to have to be in high range to get to that RPM. And uh, we're going to limit the speed to a thousand rpm just in case ID and here again 0 0.7 0 0.7 so we clear the ID with the bar this bar won't have any trouble it's a three-quarter inch bar clearance 30 thousandths that's good enough now the thread thread lead is equals one divided by 12 the thread depth, according to this um, gauge maker stuff, 0.045. Major diameter is of the internal thread max, okay, 1.625. And the ID, 1.544, 1 1.544. Okay, so that changed our thread height. The I'm taking, they, they have a tolerance ranges on this gauge maker stuff, and I'm going to the middle of the tolerance on the ID, and so their, their thread height must be from the minimum size to the maximum. It doesn't really matter. We, we're going to offset this tool when we actually run it, and so 
there's nothing else. Three, we're going to do one start thread. You're going to go even cross section on, on the chip, even depth, even depth, and specify depth. So we're just going to go even cross section. The depth of the first cut will say 10 thousandths. It says it's going to take 12 passes to get the thread, and the last, the minimum cuts 2 thousandths, and we're going to have two finish or spring passes. Now, that'd probably be fine just the way that is. The starting number of leads and ending lead. I'm, I'm going to increase this to, let's see if two on the ending lead so we'll get further up into here. Because this is the end of the tool. And remember, with these lay down inserts, you're really not at the, at the tip when you're like this. And I'm going to start five leads out in front of the part instead of four see if that that should be all right still it should clear the end of that let's run a simulation on that I mean this software I didn't take any care to finding this tool so that's the way it looks if we put the tool holder let's see what that looks like I mean you can go to a lot of trouble defining all these things but it really doesn't matter the purpose of actually programming unless you really are critical on collisions and then you might want to do it and this is going to be a full topping insert on this tool so we'll probably be adjusting this offset out until the gauge go I have a thread gauge this size that's why I selected this size thread and uh, and I'll just offset it till the gauge goes in on this because we're only running one part so it doesn't really matter so let's go back so that's the all the turning done and now we just want to put the milling for these notches for the wrench I'm using a an ER40 um, nut wrench on this is the reason I've got these notches the way I've got them so let's turn the model on and this on we got to program these notches and, and then rotate it around so the easiest way to do this is to actually define a feature that goes around this upper notch and then just rotate it around so you only have to really program one and then rotate it around but we have to get it on the right work plane which is going to be this one see the z-axis down here is pointing upward and this is important so that it rotates the b-axis to the right angle to mill this so we've got to define a feature here I'm just going to manually define this feature like, oh, we didn't take a finish cut on the OD, did we? Let's do that first. So let me turn this off again. Let, let's, um, I forgot about that. So our, our finish OD was this, and we didn't, we actually didn't do a finish face either, did we? We just roughed the face. Should have, and I'll have to position this in front of the threading cycle. In fact, I'm going to, I'm going to define a shorter distance here. Okay, the z-axis has to be pointing this direction for turning work. That's just the way this software works. I'm going to put this. This is going to be a facing cut for a finished facing cut. Face, we'll call it. I'm going to do that first. So we're going to face down that with this... Um, I think I defined it as number five. We're going to position that tool like that. 650, that looks good. Face cut, extension. Okay, 50 and 0.050. We'll extend it 50 thousandths either side. And that should be good there. So that's. Finish face and we're we're actually gonna do the same thing on the OD just position we're gonna have to call it an OD and 
and extension point 120, let's say. That'll give us room for the parting tool, although it's, it's a very little amount, but so let's, let's move those in front of the th threading tool. Watch the simulation. Oop. See, I had a problem there. This, I have the wrong starting. On this, and I'm going to also change that on the facing cut. I ran the simulation pretty fast. Let me slow it down. You see these little dots here? This is where the machine's going to wrap it to. They were way down here for the boring cycle that I did before, and I didn't change them. So now the tool shouldn't go right through the part when it backs away. <clears throat> okay, now now we can do our, our milling. Cheers, we've got to put it back on the appropriate work plane, which is not that one. I want the Z to be pointing directly up. <clears throat> I'm going to actually turn off the solid model because I don't need it for this. I'm not using the solid to program from in this case. And we're going to find our feature here. Start here. Go down that line, down that line, or arc. Back down that arc line and finish there. I'm going to find the depth of that just being minus point 0.150 probably I don't know why it won't it's acting kinda weird here won't let me select there we go alright so that's our um, profile to mill the slot and then we, we have to have a if we want to put this chamfer on here We have to define it. So this is the U R E N S slot. We'll just call it. And then we'll call that chamfer. I got kind of interrupted to get back to this thing. Here um, we defined a a profile for our chamfer so let's um let's just rough out this uh actually i think what i'm going to do here i'm going to modify this um and i'm going to close off the contour here and then when i select this here i'm going to i'm going to open this profile on the end and i can treat this as a pocket so in, we got to go down here and sub element Four. You can see these two little red dots. I don't know if you can see them there. They're kind of orange looking dots. That, that shows the element we've selected. And we're going to call this a uh, open. We're going to say true for an open profile. And you see how it made that line into a dotted line? And this is going to work kind of good because we can now treat this, instead of just a contour, we can treat it as a pocket here. And we can use a pocketing cycle. Let, let me make sure I got an end mill. So I got this 3 16 end mill here defined. And we're going to, uh, where we got here? We're going to machine pocketing. What we're going to do is we're going to select. I don't know if we're going to do a, we might do a wall finish. And we're going to do a roughing passes. I'm going to select that tool. I'm not going to. I'm not going to worry so much about the floor because this is just a wrench slot. And the strategy we're going to use is a trichotal milling strategy. And let's see. We're going to um, transition feed rate. That's when it's not cutting anything. We'll go 400 percent. That's fine. Probably we'll never make it up to that anyway. Tricoidal 
radius of one that, that that's going to be all fine there the total depth we're going to go zero on the depth that's the because i define the contour as the bottom and it's the starting height of this is only a hundred thousandths so it's just going to take it in one cut and we're going to retract a full clearance when we move to the we're, we're going to take a cut down it and then a finish cut okay so that that all looks pretty good cutting if it does a slotting strategy but it's not going to have to do that here so I'm not going to worry about that open edge we'll go um, 65 percent of the end mill and then we'll have zero lead in and out uh, lead in and outs this sh that should work let's see rpm we'll go 8,000 rpm feed rate of we'll just go 30,000 30 inches per minute we'll just be kind of conservative here 50 the z feed rate doesn't really come into play here maximum feed rate I think this has to do with uh, the transition feed rate maybe we're gonna leave that alone then we're gonna go let's go about 15 thousandths per pass on the side of the tool which is eight percent of the tool we'll try that it's not gonna take long to mill this is only gonna be one part if we were doing lots of parts we would worry probably about this and that's about five thousandths on the walls and zero on the floor finish stock entry and exit via plunge okay on this let's just see what that looks like okay there's our tool path I'm gonna rename that uh, rough wrench notches okay let's just simulate that and see what that looks like see if we got I'm gonna I didn't set this but I'm gonna set for collision a tool and tool holder <clears throat> just to see maybe I'm running into something here it looks kind of a We have a finish pass also going around this thing. I didn't set the parameters of that. Let me see what we got going here. On that, we're going to go, we're going to same 8,000 RPM, 24 inches. Of, well, we're going to go 1,000th per flute, 32 and 50. Point one. We're going to lead in and out point one. Okay. Let's simulate that and see what it looks like. Let's just show the full model. I'm going to uh, change this just a little bit. I want to move this out a little further away from that part. I think we're going to go 80%. See how that looks. All right, so I still want to be plunging. See, I'm plunging into the part here with the tip of the tool. I don't really want to do that. Let's, let's go 100%. Let's see how that works. Okay. Uh, that probably would be all right. I think I'm going to move it out just a hair more. 110. This, see, it keeps moving these finish cuts out when it does the same thing. Uh, there's not a real good control of that on this kind of software. I'm not going to worry about it for this many parts. It's not going to be a factor. I mean, just one part. 
Okay. I think I'm going to increase the depth of cut on the side there, that tricoidal milling, let's say 20 thousandths of an inch. All right. This is a good way to, to rough out a slot with an end mill. It's it just it just reduces the load on the tool. Okay, so that looked pretty good there. So what we're going to do now is take that whole thing and we're going to pattern it around. There's six of these slots, so we're going to rotate. And we're going to copy five more times, 360 degrees every 60 degrees. That's okay. And we're going to select that line to rotate around. Okay, when you do it like this, I'm going to select a little bit faster simulation speed so we can see this. <clears throat> when you do it like that, it automatically rotates the C-axis for you. You don't have to worry about because it, it creates new work planes that will rotate the C-axis. Why aren't we? Oh, I stopped it. Except that one's not in the right place. So we've got, we got to check these. Rotary angles is what we're looking for here. 60, 120. See, this one should be 180 because the b-axis is in the wrong angle 90 and 180 see that's why it's kind of important to look at these things on a simulation because sometimes it'll select the wrong work plane or something Okay, that looks good. Now all we got to do is do this the little chamfer thing right here. We select a million a contour. <clears throat> we just want to do one pass. This is just a little chamfer tool there. We'll go in the same 8,000 RPM, thousandth feed. 20, that's good, that'll work. Um, don't want any allowance. Total depth. I'm going to go about 50. Okay, let's, the taper, there is no taper on this feature. So it's 45. <clears throat> Seeing as I just used a, a straight line for the feature. <clears throat> and uh, links down and over. We could probably wrap it down. Distance 0.1. I'm going to use a 200 thousandth reference diameter in the tool. We'll, we'll try this 65. So I have to have at least 100 thousandths. Unless I do it without cutter comp. Let's see what happens here. It probably doesn't like that. I'm trying to do something that it doesn't like here. because I haven't, I haven't drawn any, I couldn't get it to draw the angle on those walls for some reason. So we're not reading the taper from the feature, but let me just try it without that. Okay, let's see what that looks like. I 
I don't think that's going to be good, but let's just see. No, thought so. I think I got a clearance problem there, first of all. 1.5. Uh, hit the wrong key. 1.5. Clearance. Let's see what happens now. I'm going to reduce the diameter of the tool. See what it came up with on this. I'm kind of trying to do something that if I push the tool down further, it's going to hit the bottom of the slot. So I'm going to use a a different control diameter on this tool. That's So this is 0 0.062. Normally when you mill a chamfer, you don't have to do all this stuff, but I'm, for some reason, it wouldn't, uh, see, because I think it's going around this, this top of this chamfer or the, the end of the slot was cut away of, of this radius OD and it and it doesn't like the um, I'm increasing the the standoff distance there a little bit it doesn't like the that contour right there for for drawing the angle on the on the um, shape because I couldn't get it to draw the angle on the shape, so I'm just using a wireframe. I had to individually rotate these around for some weird reason, but I did get it to work. I, I'm not sure why that is, but... So there's the chamfers on the, on the notches. Now all that's left is to part the thing off, which we define this contour back here. I also did a uh, thing here that in order to um, get the B-axis to rotate the appropriate angle to come straight in, you have to, you have to create a turning work coordinate, they call it in this software. And what you do is when you select this, everything that is say milling on the OD or that kind of thing it will put on this new work coordinate it calls B axis G54 B well it, it can be any fixture offset but it's this B axis thing and this so all of this stuff that's here which is the milling on the OD in this case you see how it's made all of these separate work planes you can see them there and it'll it'll um rotate the b-axis now to 90 degrees to, to come in here. You could have any angle you want. If you have these work planes or your milling coming in at different angles, it would, it would position the b-axis appropriately. If you don't do that, it'll be dealing with all of this like as if it's five-axis cuts and, and so it'll just be X, Y, and Z movements and it won't necessarily go to the place you want unless you um, actually put a five axis um, compensation on the toolpath then it might work but this this way it works better and it also can use cutter compensation for radiuses and and such if you do it this way so that's all of that but then we want to go back to this work coordinate system here to do the parting off operation which is right there and well let me um you can see it right there if I take the you know, the shading off the model just behind here and so we're going to select this lathe stuff and we're going to select part off cut off 
We're not going to leave any finish. Well, let me think about that for a second. Well, I think that'll be all right. Let's, we'll try it that way. I can skim a little bit off of there if it's necessary. I'm going to leave that... alone there we're in the high range okay I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that good there that'll clear everything there I'm just gonna leave it on finish pass let's see how that looks so that's the cutoff operation So let me uh, cut a section through this part and we'll see what that looks like. Slow it down. It's going to come over and part it off. <clears throat> now in the code, I might, I might actually reduce that cut distance in the code itself. I could do it here, but it, it's just as easy to do it in the code. I'll just back it up a little bit. So that I, I don't actually part the thing off. But it leaves it on there, and, and I have to knock it off with the hammer. Because there's no way in their cutoff cycle to... Well, let me see. Maybe there is a way. Let's let's go back to rough, and we do no finish. And rough to the diameter. Oh yeah, I can do this. Okay, let me let me do this, and select that. But I just wanna I wanna actually leave equals that plus let's say point oh one five. We'll say. Let's see what that does. Zero stock entered for the operation. I get 5.25. There we go. All right. Now, it should be just barely leaving a little bit there so that I can break it off and I might have to adjust that if, if um, that should be 15 thousandths on the diameter so it should be about seven eight thousandths thickness there which I should be able to break off with the hammer by hitting it with the hammer file location so that I can grab it over at the Mazak and drag it into the control that's the way I do it. I have a network cable connected between this laptop and the machine's control. And that's so I don't have to upload and download things. And, and the disk, this machine only has a disk drive on it, this floppy drive, these four, uh, three and a half inch floppy disks that nobody uses anymore. And it's kind of a pain, so I just do it this way. I've connected a network cable. I don't know if you can see that, but see, there's the Mazax controller right there. And I could drag it from here over to it, but it's just as easy to put it in this directory on the laptop and then go over to the Mazak and drag it over over there to the Mazak. So let me, um, we call it 805.eia. If I don't rename it to that in this directory, the Mazak won't even recognize the file. It's got to be named that program into the controls memory. First of all, I'm going to turn off this because it'll get in the way of my window. I go down here. I'm going to click on this. And let's see if I can get this to refresh itself. Okay, what, what I'm looking for here, let me, let me expand this window a little bit. I'm looking for this laptop here. I could do that over here too. I, I want this, uh, 
program transfer directory. This is where I drug the file from on the laptop over to. Now I need to go over here to the Mazak side of it. And on the D drive is where the Mazak stuff is. And here, this is the program directory where you can transfer programs back from the working memory in the, in the control to this file. This is what the machine uses. And you'll see in a second what I mean. To, to, you can kind of save programs out of your working directory so you can open up memory there. Because the, the working directory or, or memory of the control only has a limited amount of, of uh, storage. I think about two megabytes or so, two and a half megabytes. And so you, you can't keep all your programs in there or you won't have space for them. So if we scroll down to the bottom here, you remember that was the 805 program. And if I don't have a duplicate number in this in this folder, I could comp I can you know, just drag it over there like this with the mouse and drop it in there. It says it already exists in there. I don't want to over copy over that. Let's rename this 806 just to get going here. Because um, I'm not sure about that program and I don't want to delete something I need. So I'm going to just rename that 806. And then I'm going to drag that over to the programs folder, which it did it there. Now, if I, if I, uh, if I, well, you got to, in order to refresh this, you kind of got to change back and forth. So we got to change back and forth and it'll be there it's at the top now I can highlight that and transfer it over okay so now if I go to program work number 806 this is the program that we just made on the computer but you're not this is just the editing side of the control and so we got to go over to the EIA monitor here and we got to call up see it see it's setting on program 803 right now we got to call up 806 and make sure we 806 oh I didn't rename that see I didn't rename this in the in the um, actual G code file so it's named 805 rename this 806 just to so we got a continuity between the two names but this is the name of the program in the um, actual G code file and the other one that you were seeing on the the um, program file this is the name as if it's on the computer two different things here and also there's two different um, areas you can be in see if you're here program editing you can edit while you run so they have two different kind of spots you can actually edit a program while you're running it well you can't edit the program you're running but you can edit another program so so that's um here but if you go into the memory mode and you go to what they call the EIA monitor now this is the program that you're actually running here which if I open up the, the um, program monitor, that's the program that we're actually running when we go to the auto mode. Not, not necessarily the, the program when you're in the manual mode. If you put the machine in the manual mode and go to program, this is a program you can edit, which can be the same program. Here we are at the machine to machine the nut we just programmed. It's a rough facing cut and rough you know, D cuts. And I had to set in a new drill here. I didn't have this tongue alloy drill, inch and three eighths tongue alloy drill in there yet, so I had to touch it off. Had real good success with these tongue alloy drills. It's just drilling the hole to depth. And now I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do here is I didn't have these tools set up, so I'm gonna touch off the Z and set the X diameters on these the three uh, turning tools the rough bore the finish bore and the threading tool here before I get going with the program 
Uh, that way I've got some stock where I can cut the ID a little bit to set my X offset on the turning tools. Otherwise, if you finish the ID, you wouldn't have anything to cut. You'd have to kind of touch it off some other way. It's always good to cut a diameter when you're touching off a lathe tool if you can. Or you could use a probe, but the probe is very difficult to use on this machine. So I'd just do this. So that's the threading tool here. So once I got all those offsets set, I'm going to run the part. So here's the rough boring cycle like you saw me program. We got the rough the thread relief and then finish the ID here. It's the first pass. I set the offset down so that I could check it and then rerun the tool to get it to size. So that's the real finish pass. And I'm happy with that size, so now we can come back with the finishing tools. Here's the finish face and the finish OD cut. And I had a shaving problem there. And then we come in with a threading tool to thread the ID. So happened I hit this size right on the first time. Usually I set these things down, but I maybe I forgot or something, I don't know, but I was lucky it, it, it gauged just right the first time I ran it. So that's the finished ID work. And kind of grainy, but you can see it. And then I also had to set up a new tool for this because I didn't have it in the changer. This is a 3 16 four flute carbide end mill. Do these wrench notches. It's a, like you saw when the, I programmed it, the trichotal roughing cycle. And just to finish the walls. This is sped up quite a bit so it, it looks kind of funny but I think I sped it up maybe five times faster than normal just so we wouldn't have to wait forever to see it so that's that tool and then I had to touch off a chamfering tool I didn't have that set up either or, or either I was just checking it maybe I can't remember and so we cut the little chamfer on the top of the notches and here I'm just checking to see if it's the way I want it seemed alright so I'm just going to run it it's not critical just kind of break the edge I was trying to run all this without coolant so we could see what's happening, but normally there'd be a bunch of flood coolant there and we wouldn't see anything. Here I'm just checking the wrench. It's an ER40 collet wrench is what I'm using on this nut. And I can't run this parting tool without coolant, so I ran it once here. And it was still kind of too thick to break it off with the hammer, so I re-ran it again without coolant so we could kind of see it. And it just barely took another ten thousandths, I think, on the diameter there so I could break it off. It was still a little bit thick. And breaking the burr off of the pliers. And deburring the back with the, my NSK uh, pencil grinder. And I file it a little bit. It's a real fine file I keep just for this kind of thing. I'm going to check to make sure the gauge still went through. We didn't have a burr or something there. It seemed to be okay. So that's the nut. It's going to go on this fixture for the sleeve. 